Well, the only thing I put together here, because I knew Dr. Singer was going to have a, a, a thorough talk on this, was... Um, he's not talking about the only cardio plate. Oh, he's not? He's talking about the other? No. Okay, so, well, well, this is what I put together, because the, um, for people who don't use it, um, and not really familiar with it, or even people who are, it's just a one slide that gives you the, the actual ingredients of the original, the way Dr. Del Nido originally described it in his original um, article. Okay. Um, the, the base solution is, is to be plasm light, one milliliter of plasm light A. And that's a basic solution with normal sodium, potassium of 5, magnesium of 3, and a pH of 7.40. Okay. The next thing is to add mannitol. And it's interesting because they only add 3.26 grams of mannitol. But this gives you your osmotic pressure, your free radical scavenger component. Then they have, uh, add two grams of magnesium. A lot of us are familiar with that already. That's a calcium channel blocker. It improves myocardial recovery. Then they give sodium bicarb, only 13 milliequivalents per liter. But that's your pH buffer. Then as far as potassium goes, it's 26 milliequivalents in the one liter bag. But the actual delivery of the potassium, if you'll read articles, it usually says it's 24, and that's because you're diluting it with one to four blood. So all of these numbers are gonna come down a little bit. And so, of course, the potassium is for myocardial depolarization. And then you have the lidocaine, which was one of the big elements when he developed this, and that is 130 milligrams. It's a sodium channel blocker and a hyperpolarizing agent. So this is just a quick down and dirty slide about what is Del Nido? Now, the reason I put the originally described formula up is that the conversation that you run into, if you go around, is people are always tweaking this. There's yeah. so many different versions of right. what people are doing with this that Dr. Del Nido has come out a number of times and said, a lot of people are using modified versions, number one. Number two, I never prescribed it or, or developed it for adult ca uh, cardiac surgery. And so, you know, he was trying to pull back on what he originally uh, put this together for. Having said all that, there is a lot of success that people are seeing with Del Nido. And I, um, I guess at this point I would just turn it over to Dr. Samir. But this is delivered also at a one to four <coughs> blood to crystalloid ratio. And the blood is also for a little bit of oxygen delivery and also for uh, buffer capacity. Well, thank you very much. All of those are, I think, very good points. Um, and a good, uh, I think, tee up to this. So first of all, we'd like to welcome Dr. Hani Samir. You remember Dr. Samir thank from you. our previous programs. Dr. Samir, thank you for being here thank so you, early man. in the morning and making it out here to the hinterland. <laughs> so, Actually, I had a tour of Magnolia this morning. It was great. <laughs> was it good? You had to go through Magnolia? Yes. How was your area? Did it flood pretty bad? Um, the Med Center did flood very bad this time. Yeah, oh, it did? Uh, yes. Yeah. I, mean, it's all, I mean, getting into the Med Center was the problem. Yeah. Uh, we had to shut down transplant because we couldn't get in, they couldn't fly in or out, so we had to shut down transplant. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, welcome. I'm glad you made it here this morning. Thank you. And we're looking forward to your afternoon session on ECMO. He's talking about ECMO today. He's going to okay. be talking about when to call for ECMO and when not to call for ECMO is his part two. Okay, followed by walking patients around with Christine. Is she here yet? No, not yet. Not yet. Well, welcome once again. Thank you Thank for you. coming back and seeing us Thanks up here. We me. appreciate having you. So what is your thoughts on all of this, Dr. Samir, on Del Nido cardioplegia? It seems to be the, the latest and greatest idea. Everybody's kind of jumping on the bandwagon with it. Um, I will, and I think that John just mentioned that, you know, Dr. Uh, uh, Del Nido himself, uh, named after, um, did not develop it for adult cardiac surgery. It was designed for the uh, pediatric uh, 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 pop patient population. Um, I have some concerns, and I'll tell you what those concerns are. And I think you brought it up, though, with the, uh, with the modification of this original formulation. Some people are having great results with it. I know several. Dr. Dr. Wynn has great results with it. A lot of people are talking about how great it is. But in the 11 years that I've been here in Houston, the, I saw one case of true cardiac stunning following, you know, basically post-cardiotomy, following bypass surgery, 
where I believe the problem was inadequate myocardial protection with cardioplegia, a lack of good cardioplegia delivery on that patient. One in 11 years. When we switched to Del Nido, I saw five in one year. That's concerning to me. And two of them were Stoneheart. And they all five went on ECMO. That's worrisome. Is it the modification of it? Is it the delivery of it? Why did that happen? And is it just coincidental? What's your view? To be honest with you, stunning, I mean, after bypass, I mean, as you know, there's like a million reasons. I mean, and, I mean, are you delivering uh, correctly? Are you sure you're delivering? Are you sure you don't have AI? I mean, these are kind of situations, I mean, I, really, I mean, uh, to be honest with you, our the needle situation has been very surgeon specific. Some of them love it, some of them can't stand it, as you know very well. Yeah, yeah some of them can't stand it. Some think they're the best thing in life. Some say, I'm not gonna do anything new, I've been doing fine before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the, the, the thing about it, you're not getting too much hemodilution. So, I mean... Uh, you get massive hemodilution with Del Nido. Uh, the, 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 it's the, massive. Let me, I, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna have to jump a little bit the back. I'm gonna tell you one thing. I am a uh, friend, my old bite wanna hit me. That uh, the only reason, my, the biggest determinant during bypass, how things uh, progress after, is your pressure during bypass. What you've been thinking of mean pressure, at, not your hemoglobin. Well, that's how your kidneys fail. That's how your brain fails. Is pressure you've been thinking on bypass. Well, I think that's part of it. I mean, yeah. so you so you dispute or you disagree that hemoglobin is an important component to perfusion? Are you disagreeing with that? Yeah, I think, let me tell you something. I'm very comfortable, and I'm, I'm, I know I'm, I'm a critical care also. I'm very comfortable running anybody hemoglobin of seven. I'm very comfortable with seven. Seven mm -hmm. does not keep me awake at all. I think seven is super great. Because you're also looking into viscosity, when you start doing device surgery, viscosity is a big deal. People underestimate viscosity and its issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, I'm a, I, I, that's a controversy we have in the OR. But that's a device. If you, what if you have a patient Seven. who's starting off with, a, with an ejection, we're gonna change topics. Uh, yeah, I'm, with I'm an sorry. Eject, that's okay. With an injection fraction of uh, 20%, and they're on some pressors, they're on some inotropes, you know, they're kind of limping along. You're still happy with seven? Uh, you know, I'm gonna pick I'm on not. men. I'm gonna pick on men because I know him. I can pick on. He's not gonna hit me. <laughs> okay. Um, I am gonna. I'm gonna tell you something. And you might hit me, Joe, later. But I have protection. Uh, I'll tell you. I want to flow high. Okay. But if I, the heart can't flow high, if the heart is compromised, so you you you're. I have no problem with the hemoglobin of seven if I have a mechanical circulatory device. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about weaning this patient now off bypass with a weak heart, not an LVAD. They're not getting a VAD. Their, their own native heart that's recently been revascularized that you use Del Nido on. You have a, a lack of good distribution. You've already got a compromised ventricle, now even more compromised with ischemia because you chose Del Nido over just regular old Plegisol, which makes more sense with multiple doses, in my opinion, humble opinion. Um, and you still feel that O2 content, therefore O2 delivery is seven is fine. Because remember O2 delivery, the biggest determinant you can change is your carpet out of the carpet index. But if your cardiac output is compromised. But you will have to optimize it. You have to optimize it. If you cannot do it by drugs, then you have to use I mean, there's balloons out there and there's impasse out there. And you, if you keep whipping your heart with, a, with, a, with, a, with the chemicals, then you are doing the wrong thing. I'm so sorry. So you would rather put an impella in than give the patient two units of, of Absolutely. Of blood. You know really? why? Because the impella is going to get him through the post-op period into the ICU with a bunch of drama. And, uh, and we don't have to treat up the drugs. I mean, he said something that's amazing. When you go to the ICU, things run crazy. If I go to the ICU with that, with that epi of five, I know that's a very dangerous situation because that's going to run away epi to eight, nine, 10, 11 later. I have no room for error. You have to always allow room for error after you take the patient to the ICU. <laughs> so you have to, you have to come with a, like basically have a, 
uh, like a little uh, uh, room that you can move in. If you are back strips and you have no room to move in, you are really asking for trouble. You can, whether you have put this patient hemoglobin from eight to seven, or nine, whatever you want, you need a device. You need to have you need to have room. So true. Robert Parchman says, and I asked him to call in, and this is our knock on, and we love you. We love our anesthesiologists. It's okay? okay. It's okay. I'm ready for the bullets. All <laughs> bullets. <laughs> I, 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 I am All, ready. I, nice. I have a cavalry coming. Yes, yes, yes. Robert, Robert Parchman from Shreveport, Louisiana, Shreve Patch or whatever. I've found that no matter how hard you work to get your hemoglobin to an acceptable point, and they use seven as our trigger. Mm -hmm. You get off pump, patient looks great. The first dip in blood pressure, the anesthesiologists go wide open with their drips instead of maybe just a little pharmacological support and a tincture of time. And then I of course that seven is six. No, no, I don't think you should open it. fluids. Any, any anesthesiologist gonna open fluids, I, I would, that's crazy. I'm a very, if you put the CVP up and up, you're cursing my mother. So that's for me, CVP going like out of control, that is, that's crazy. We had a rule, and again, it's my device world. My device world is CVP can never go above 15, which whatever, that number we came up with from Germany. It's not like a magic number, but it was just, we had to come up with some number. I'm very sensitive to CVP. I'm very sensitive to the right heart. I will oh, it's, never, it's, never, yeah. never, 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 Push the right heart over the edge because you can never come back. That's right. It's like right. the kidneys. It's yes. the most underappreciated <laughs> part half it's the of orphan, the heart. It's the orphan yeah. organ. It's yes. the orphan organ. Yeah. yeah, the orphan organ. I yeah. like yeah. that. Yeah. It is the orphan organ. So I'll tell you, the right heart really, you, you really have to baby it and uh, treat it very nicely. And I will, again, pick on Min because he cannot hit me, <laughs> you know. I, I was obsessed, and he will tell you. And you can be honest. Oh, yeah, absolutely. With the return volume line. I'm obsessed with the return volume yeah. line. Why? Because I want to get every last drop of blood yes. from the patient. Yes, the plasma, what everything. platelets there exactly. are, everything. Right. You know, and so uh, did you hear our discussion about ultrafiltrating our post-pump volume so that we don't have to give as much volume back, but we're I, giving I, concentrated volume. He can, so. he, he can testify to that. I believe in that 100%, and I believe in giving every last drop. You have every last drop. I want the return volume line hooked up until every last drop because you're forgetting about the plasma and everything else. Mm -hmm. People think because the line is clearing out, it's fine. Well, it's, you know something, well, it's better than giving regular fluid from the IV bag. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because there's something else in it. Yeah. So I, get that volume line in and, and then do some pharmacological agent and tincture of time. I do not believe in going, uh, opening IV fluids. That's just crazy. Mm -hmm. But it We're is not, something that happens. You know, we are trash talking and I say, it's not abdominal surgery. We're not doing a belly case today. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. I, and you know, I never believe in that. Mm -hmm. I would never open volume in a, in a heart case. I mean, that doesn't get you anywhere except in trouble. Mm -hmm. Okay? Agreed. Yeah, I mean, we, yeah. I think we agree with you. Yeah. So back to Del Nido cardioplegia. <laughs> back to Del Nido. Bottom line, what's your opinion about it? The, uh, the opinion of any stunned heart is because of how you're delivering the uh, cardioplegia mm -hmm. and the frequency, and did you forget or not, and you have AI or not. Are you really looking, watching the pressure line? Are you really knowing that this, you're delivering the right? And when I tell you the pressure is high, I'm not kidding. Mm -hmm. It is high. Mm -hmm. You need maybe pull back a little. It's, a, it's going well, against the wall. That's if it's in the, in the sinus. Yeah. So I mean, do you, you just, believe then everyone has to get retrograde as well as anagrade? Absolutely. And that's, I think, a problem. That's where our, that's, and that's a yes. big problem. And if it's in too deep, then your right heart is going to seriously get compromised because right. we're not going to perfuse it. John, you had something? So, so, Joe, let me just you bring up a very interesting topic. These patients that you're talking about with the stunned myocardium, were these coronary bypass patients? Coronary patients. Okay, so, so right off the bat, Del Nido for adults is supposed to be used on valves. Yep. Only. Right, but I've but, got a paper but, right here. That's true, actually. But I have a, yeah. but I have but, a paper right, right here. No, 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 I'm not saying people, I'm not, no, I'm not saying people yeah. aren't doing it. And let me tell you what happened, just to throw this, because you bring up a very interesting topic. In 2017, when I was at that small hospital, the surgeon came to me and said, I want to look into Del Nido cardioplegia. So I called them, because I didn't know much about it. I called them. I think they're out in California. Is that I don't where they, know where they are. And they, they put me in, in directly in touch with their clinical expert. And he was a perfusionist. And he told me, um, uh, what kind of cases do you do there? I said, well, we pretty much do all cavities. He said, right off the bat, 
absolutely not. I will not want you to use it. And I said, well, well tell me what, what you're trying to say. He said, this is what happens, the danger of using Del Nido with cabbage patients. The, the formula is very powerful at keeping the EKG flatline, although your preservation may be poor. And so he said, once you give Del Nido, and if you have blockages, the reason the patient's in the OR is because they have poor perfusion past the blockages. The same is likely to occur with the cardioplegia, hence the reason why you're going to get mm -hmm. retrograde. So you, may, However, not see an, you he, may not see electrical activity, but you have subendocardial right. activity he said that you, you're not, once or you, mechanical activity that you're not seeing or appreciating. It's a very fine fibrillatory right. and you're just chewing up all of your ATP. He said with, with Del Nido, an, uh, a flatline EKG is not indicative of myocardial preservation, where most of us sort of look to that mm -hmm. as, as a big indicator. Mm -hmm. He said, to me, he said, once you've given Del Nido, you may be okay if you've gotten an adequate amount past the blockages, but you may not. And he says, you just can't unring that bell. Yeah. You may look fine, but you're going to find out when you come off that you're not. And if you're going to keep redosing, <clears throat> then you may as well use traditional cold, high potassium, cardioplegia, like St. Thomas Solution or Plegisol or whatever other version you give. And I think that's where the advantage of our traditional approach makes more sense. Because what do you do every time you do a bypass grab? You give your initial dose of cardioplegia, let's say you don't use retrograde, you do a bypass graft, you give it another dose down the coronaries, native coronaries, and down the graft. Mm -hmm. Then you do your next graft. You give it down that graft too. You start increasing, the, your time is six to 10 minutes, depending on how fast your surgeon is or how slow they are, <laughs> um, before you're giving another dose. So with wide open coronaries, for right. a, a minimally invasive valve, right. so you don't want to have to keep giving and it's problematic and I understand that, yeah, it makes sense. But for a routine coronary bypass case, the extra minute or two it takes to give another dose of cardioplegia is inconsequential and not worth the risk, in my opinion. I mean, the, the, I mean, the premise was you're going to give that one shot and you're covered for the whole case and you keep going. Yeah. I mean, that's the premise. Right. But, I mean, I don't think that premise works with what kind of blockages you have mm -hmm. and what kind of AI you have. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll tell you something. So, I think you're taking a chance by giving that one shot, thinking you're covered and your mind's at peace. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I don't so. Mm -hmm. Does it make the job of, you know, and I have to, I have to admit this. God, I hate to admit this. I've never actually been the perfusionist on a case and given del nido cardioplegia. I've only ever given intermittent, you know, regular right. cardioplegia. Mm -hmm. Does it really make your job easier to not have to give another dose? You don't have to think about that. I mean, I, I mean the, the thought is you not have to think about the every 20 minutes you're like, the 20 minutes are up. Uh -huh. You have to remind oh. the, the 20 minutes are up. Perfusionists love it. I mean, it's, yeah. it's one time shot and done. Exactly. You know, yeah. you don't have to worry about, oh, it's been 20, 20 minutes, minutes and, oh, it's been 25 and we have fibrillation. It's like you go on pump, yeah. you give the, and you just, wow. You, and then. You're not so, bothering the surgeon. Mm -hmm. that you that's the, that's like, the beauty of it. It's yeah. like, you, they don't want to hear from you anyway. Mm -hmm. But I enjoy job, bothering them. Right. Yeah, well. <laughs> and I do too. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, it's, it's, I, I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, okay. I, I'm looking at the EKG. If I see a little atrial, you know, activity, I'll still say something. I mean, you see something, you say something. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it actually happened to me. It was a, we'd had an aortic valve with thick myocardium. I gave my 1300 of Del Nido and I said something and he said, he goes like, well, it doesn't look like it. Maybe it's just, you know, pump chatter or, you know, some artifact. We, we actually looked, we, I turned off all my, all my, uh, my pumps and it was real. Sucker, vent, was, turned everything yeah, off, I, I and turned it was an artifact. It, it was, was not an artifact. He actually took um, a, a, an osteo cannula and went down the left, went down the, did not change it, went down the right, knocked it right out. Yep. Mm -hmm. And the right, right corner out. is the one that always seems exactly. to suffer the most. It's exactly. It. Always seems to well, suffer. Well, going back to what these two gentlemen just said, when Dr. Del Nido developed the technique, on infants and pediatrics, there's no blockages in the coronary. Right. There's no AI. And the myocardium is vastly different. So those three things is why he, I think, is 
I can't see trying to John pull the reins back on the John adult Cameron. usage, but the adult hey, usage is no. exploding, actually. <laughs> oh, John's on the phone? Oh, go ahead and put him on. Hey, John. Hey, Joe, how are you guys doing? I'm doing great. It's good to talk to you. This is brother. Yeah. We just got to talking right. to your brother. Are you yeah, guys? I, I got in a little late. I, I, I forgot to sign up for the CU this morning, but I'll just do it right afterwards, you know? Sure. What's up? Oh, no, I was going to comment on you guys' Del Nido uh, conversation. Please. So we've got one guy uh, that started here not too long ago. He's a Del Nido for all his cases. It's going, it's going pretty well, but I, I agree with what you guys say as far as, um, you know, if you have AI, then that could be a major issue if, or if you've got, uh, make sure you've got complete uh, myocardial preservation, you know, with the cabbages and stuff, it might be an issue. Yeah, I think that we, that's been our consensus. Yeah, I don't, we haven't had any issues with ours, even in our cabbage patients, but I mean, we're really fast here, like, you know, so I, I think that has a big advantage as well even though it's good for up to an hour so are you guys using retro with your cabbage patients in del nido no no our straight cabbage patients are um, mm -hmm. integrated only one shot too oh, mm -hmm. so, one so shot. i mean so the technique of your surgeon is he doing distal prox or does he complete the whole graft and how does that work with no you? we do all distals and then um okay and then he the guy that uses del nido for cabbage is he'll uh, do the proximals under one clamp. The other guys would do a partial clamp. Yeah. But I, I, we only have one guy with Del Nido. Yeah. I only ask because if you had the redose, you know, you could still give that, that you know, four or five hundred of extra Del Nido and it actually goes down the actual bypass graft. So that's, that's right. my question. Right. Well, I think they, they put the uh, syringe, the, the syringe has Del Nido. Right. So, uh, you know what I mean, that they, they yeah. test the grafts with. Yeah, because that's how um, Harrington used to do it. He used to do all his all his distals and proximals, and then he'd give his cardioplegia, and that's how that's how he got away with not using retro. If you remember back in Detroit. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And he was fast. So. He was fast. A lot, I mean, a lot single, like the guys here. But that's another conversation. Single cross clamp makes I mean more sense to me than putting a partial occluding clamp. I mean, the less times you clamp the aorta, the better off you are for neurologic protection. Don't you think? You're, oh, you're, I agree. But you're, yeah. you're yeah. too much guys. Yeah. Yeah. But, but then you go to a conversation with less ischemic time. Right. Well, I, that's, Maybe. that's the reason. Not, well, if, you have, not if you have occluded coronaries true. and you haven't connected the, the proximals yet. Yeah. So, you know, then, I don't know. I don't know if I buy that. But, you know, or hook up, I guess you could hook sure. a pigtail up yeah. to it, you know, one yeah. of those octopus yeah. and run continuously yeah. through the coronaries while he's doing the, the proximal each individual one. So there was a question here, and I can't answer it at all. Dr. Samir or anybody else on the panel, Rodell, John, Min, maybe you can. Brian uh, said that he, uh, can we include custodial oh, in this talk? Um, right, I agree. He says, I am new to both, uh, but our surgeons prefer Del Nido for cabbages, but custodial for valves. And uh, personally, he feels it's a bit less in touch during a case when not using normal, normal cardioplegia. In other words, not having to stay aware. You give that one shot and forget it. He feels like that it disengages him somewhat from the procedure. But let's talk about the first part of his. And if you know anything about it, John, please uh, uh, add to this conversation custodial versus um, Del Nido. I don't know anything. I don't know enough about it. Well, I think custodial is good for longer um, yeah. distance. You know, you get a lot a longer time on it. And there was a, a talk here, and I think it was presented by the custodial guy, so I think that was a grain of salt. And it was showing that custodial is probably better than Del Nido, but of course I missed that talk. It was like mm. uh, I had work that night. So I don't know a whole lot about custodial. never used it, but from what my colleague said, that um, it seemed pretty good. It was very similar to Donino. It gives you a longer, you know, ischemic time, let's say, uh, safe time, and, cool. and with similar results. But I'm not 100% sure because mm -hmm. you know, I've never actually used it or really read up on it that much. What do I, you know? I've never used it, but it was originally used for organ transplants, and that's what preserves the organ during, during uh, transportation. Okay, so when you do a heart transplant, you use custodial? before yes. you do the explant. Mm -hmm. Correct. And so that's the, because that gives you the longer, well, longer it's dur preserved. duration. Yeah, it's preserved. I believe they just give a shot. Is there, what's the difference in the formula? Do you know? 
I, I don't. I don't have it, and I, I'm not as experienced at this as well, but I can tell you, I did go to a meeting, sounds like maybe John was at the same one uh, about a year and a half ago, <coughs> where the, the company rep did stand up and talk about it, and taking it a little bit with a grain of salt that it was a company rep, the ingredients and what each ingredient does in the HTK is pretty impressive. It really is very impressive. If you want to really... Uh, HTK is the custodial? It's custodial, it's custodial yeah. yeah. If you look at what those ingredients are doing independently and synergistically, it's very impressive. Mm -hmm. And it almost makes you think, wow, we should really consider uh, looking into that. Where, where I'm at, we use all of these things, <coughs> depending on the surgeon preference. But if you think about it, you're up to about a four-hour ischemic time with your heart transplants mm -hmm. right. with a single dose. Mm -hmm. What other solution can you get away with with that? Not, not any. You know, and that's, that's, that's what happens with it. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty powerful yeah. formula. Yeah, kidneys, mm. kidney transplants, liver transplants, that's what they were using it for. Really? Yeah, for huh. preservation. Well, uh, now uh, we're going to get away from preservation because now we're, there's a, a couple of pumps that develop put the hearts on to transport them. Right, keep it beating. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, right. There's, keep there's it beating two, and perfused. Yeah. There's two pumps and actually we're starting to use them and that's what the plan is to use them so you can fly orgas from Hawaii, fly mm -hmm. orgas yeah. back and forth. So. That's mm -hmm. right, that's so right. We're, well, starting, um, we're starting to work on that. Exactly, and I think I've seen, we've seen several of those, uh, even, even a heart and lung in block, where you're ventilating the lungs and oh, perfusing the heart actually, yeah. all at the same time. And one of, one, of, one of the pumps actually is using the donor's own blood and you put it, you're, I mean, and you're running it, uh, you're flowing it, and it's really amazing. That is amazing. That yeah. is amazing. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, you're basically, uh, and you're adding, you know, uh, potassium, you're adding uh, electrolytes, but uh, you're using a donor's own blood as the volume. Okay, so you're actually allowing the heart to stay in diastolic arrest. Yeah but perfuse, so you need a mechanical pump, not exactly. necessarily beating. No, you need the mechanical pump, yes. Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. YouTube comment, okay. Um, and then, oh yeah, and then with custodial, he says, uh, getting switching topics, thanks Brian, you must ultrafiltrate immediately yeah. Because custodial is a two liter, do two, right. mm -hmm. two liter dose on everybody. There's no blood. There's no blood at no all, 100% crystalloid. Straight two liters. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's been the big, the big deal with, uh, with uh, what you call it? What's that Elnido? stuff called? Um, no, the microplege. You know that oh, that yeah. when you give that much fluid, that much crystalloid into the coronaries, you get significantly more histologically uh, being examined, much more myocardial edema, mm -hmm. and that is going to give you perfusion deficits later and make for contractility myocardial problems. Edema, I mean. So you know. Is the on, is the is the is the osmotic pressure of custodial and Del Nido so high that you don't have that as an issue? Has it even been explored or looked at? I just don't know the answers. I listen. I can add, I tell yeah. you this. You know what we're going to conclude from today's conversation? That 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 we don't really know. <laughs> we don't know. We don't know. Yeah, there's so many arguments. Yeah, the right. old the old fashioned twenty uh, minutes. Nothing wrong with yeah. it. There's well, I mean, yeah. I'll tell you that. I mean, nothing wrong with it, and you always. Assessing, I think 20 minutes gives you a chance to assess, reassess. Right. Yes. And you're not depending on things you don't know. And not having AI, you're, you are, even if the cane is not 100% the right place, you're able to deliver some more. Yep. I think that uh, lack of that 20 minutes more and more, is, it gives you like um, you're relying on something. That's the problem with the leader. It's relying on a perfect anatomy. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you rely on it. You cannot rely on that. You know and that's what kids have. I mean, yes. Because they have some, they have, you know, an other, <laughs> a, a, they have an anatomical deformity, but it's not coronary circulation. Right. right. Generally speaking. And I think it was John earlier, or, or still on, that said yeah, he yeah. has a one surgeon that he gives it anagrade, Del Nido anagrade only, because I guess he doesn't, he's very fast, doesn't feel like putting in a retrograde coronary sinus in, right? Yeah, that's correct. Right. So, well, one day you're going to have this problem, and I would keep that in the back of your mind <clears throat> so it doesn't come back on you that, you know, you, what Dr. Samir just said, it depends on a perfect anatomy. None of your coronary artery patients have that perfect perfusion anatomy, and, and you're going to get a total blockage somewhere <clears throat> where your retrograde would have been necessary for your Del Nido, and you may have a stunned heart that you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. You're getting away with a lot because you have a fast surgeon, and you, you will right. probably for a, quite a while. But I think, Joe, you've seen enough cases now, and that's one reason why you brought this to the controversies 
topic when we yes. talked about this because you're seeing some now that that doesn't always work out. I've, listen, I've, we have, <coughs> we have, I think two surgeons now who have abandoned um, the use of certainly one for sure, but I think the other is on the fence. They, 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 they're, and I'm gonna, you know, I, I'm gonna push them to go back to regular cardioplegia, much to the chagrin of my colleagues here sitting here with me but right. Nin's my favorite so I don't need to worry about it he's on my side he's always on 